Hi, hope everybody's okay today. It's Lyle from Made My Barley. Today we're going to be making, I already have the finished piece because for some reason I, I deleted the intro. As you can see, my crafting skills are, are quite good, but my uh, editing and videoing and camera angles is not good. So today we're going to be making this um, spring um, garland. It's not overtly in your face. It's not all pinks and pastels and springy. It's quite shabby chic, quite French sort of. It's got all the relief in it. Um, we have to kind of use paper clay to get it all looking swanky, but it, it is really cute. Um, if I hold it like that, probably you can see it. Um, it's cute. It's understated, but very nice. And the photos and everything that I've done don't actually do it justice because there's such fabulous relief in them. Um, but you need some craft bunting. You need some uh, wooden beads. Now, in the video, I tell you, you need six beads all through it. You need seven beads. I only worked that out at the end. So it's been a bit, a bit of one of those days. It's been emotional. So um, you need seven beads. And uh, some paper clay. You need some mylar stencils. If you have any mylar stencils, um, you need some mylar stencils. And um, you need uh, a clay tool or a pen or knife or something to cut some glue with and a little bit of glue any kind of glue i use mod podge but it could be any kind of glue just to glue down the not print stick or anything like white glue or pva or any of those kind of glues to glue your paper clay down you really have to work of it work to push your clay down um and i used a ruler to do that um it was quite it was the tool of choice actually i have actually tons of clay tools i'm ceramic artist <laughs> But I'm using a ruler. I'm trying to use things that I think that people have at home. Um, not everybody has a plethora of clay tools to be able to use. But the ruler worked just fine. You just have to really work at doing it. As much texture and stamping as you can. That's my only sort of advice. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this. And uh, if you like it, subscribe. So what you're going to need to make these is you're going to need six... Um, craft blank shapes um, from the bunting kit or six pieces of wood or six pieces of thick card. Um, my hands are already kind of covered in uh, paper clay because I was just tiling some of this this morning. So you need six of those and you need six wooden beads. Um, you need something to put texture into your design. So I'm just using a Reese stamp just it's just got quite good texture on it. I'm going to use that. A little bit of Mod Podge and some Mylar stencils, some Mylar letter stencils, and we're going to be spelling the word spring out. So what you need to do first of all is just get a brush and some Mod Podge and clear the decks and we'll start with our S. Just put some glue in the middle where you think your mylar stencil is going to go. This will just make the paper clay kind of adhere. It's not, it, the, the paint will really hold it together, but right now it's just for doing that. So we need to get um, our S. So here's our S. I already practiced with the S, so it's a little bit covered in clay. So you put your S down, try and get it central to where you're going. This will kind of, the wee bit of glue on there will help it kind of, um, the stencil kind of stay in put. And then what you're doing is you're just breaking off lumps of clay on top of it. And then get, getting a ruler. Be careful to hold on to your stencil, don't let your stencil go underneath or it'll shift and then you'll not have a crisp line and then what you're doing is oops, move that out of the way, is you're just pushing the paper clay into the relief of the mylar stencil like that now it takes a wee bit of practice to get it all in and you have to keep like almost taking the paper clay off the back of the ruler
you think you've got the whole stencil covered, all your letter filled in, just gently peel back your stencil. release that now. And there we go. Now it doesn't look that attractive at this stage. If, it, if we get any of the clay goes over the edge, just kind of clean it off. And that's how that currently looks. I'm just going to put a wee blob of clay in there just to thicken that up. Now, then you need to put, think about putting some texture onto it and you just getting anything that's got a good print on it that you can push into the clay gently just to just to give it the relief this is supposed to look like old sort of clay and old pottery so I think I missed a little bit of my just not a little bit there just not to quite join it up but just Don't matter if you poke all the way through onto your wood, we're going to be painting it. And at the very end, just neaten up your edges. Like that. But make sure you don't have too many bits of clay on the bot back because on the piece of MDF because we don't want that all showing up when it's painted. So there we have it. That's your S and I'll show you how to do the P and then um, I'll do the rest off camera. So Mod Podge, um, P is here. Put your P on where you think it's central. Get your bits of paper clay and then just squeeze on into the gap Oops, I think that one's squeezed underneath fix that in a minute now it's a little bit time consuming but I think it's worth it to get that relief. Just a matter of working and working and working until it's all oops, I kind of moved there. Looks like it's not going to release. than the last one I did so just straighten up your edges now remember it's supposed to look like old pottery so don't worry if it looks a little bit like mine and it's not quite perfect the less perfect it looks the more perfect it'll be if you know what I mean join that bit all that together so just get rid of any excess clay on the back end of the MDF back side so there's our P shape and we're just going to get rid of the excess paper clay off the lower and then we're going to stamp some texture into it just gently. Just put 
version of that and then to look I'm just going to make the message up again so that's us we've got our S and our P I'm going to go on and do all the rest of the letters and um, I'll be back So I've went ahead and I've done all my letters, but what I've also done is I've got some small typeset, uh, typeset stamps um, and I've so where I've done the big S, I've put a little S. Now, because of the regularity of the size of the letters, I couldn't fit it in at the same place every place. So on the P, it's down here. On the R, it's kind of in the middle. It's just to give it a little bit more interest when it's painted. Um, so I've left the G till the end just to show you um, what I did. So I just got a tiny little bit of square of clay. I kind of made it into a square. I got my little stamp. I just um, put it, I'm using an old silhouette mat just so the clay doesn't stick. Um, and then I just stamped into it from the letter. And I just got rid of the excess. Now I didn't want a completely straight line. I didn't want it to look too perfect. It's supposed to be old ceramic. So I just kind of like went around it roughly until I ended up with something like that. And then what it was, I just, where is my G? There it is. I've just got to find somewhere to put it. So I think on this one, I'll put it on this corner here. And I'll just put my G there on that one. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to let all these completely dry and um, once they're all completely dry what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them all white before I come back so next time you'll see these they're dry and they're all painted white and then we'll start painting in um, some relief with some tone and shade. So they're all dry now and what I've done is I've mixed up a darker brown which was just a little bit more dark brown in the paint that I had and I've watered it down a little bit. So it's a little bit dribbly, but not, not too runny. And um, I got my natural wooden beads and I just put some of this watery brown mixture on it and then I rubbed them off with a cloth just to kind of give them the appearance of kind of, they're old, they're a wee bit shabby looking. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make sure we have some water um, on hand for this because you want to water it down. You're going to paint in the chocolatey brown onto just onto the letter really although it will end up seeping over the edge and everything so just work a little bit at a time water your brush down and then just kind of like add a bit more water see it's starting to run onto the and then once you've kind of painted it in with the brown just get a soft paint bag and just wipe it back like that and repeat each step until you've covered all your letters. Um, it doesn't matter if it kind of goes slightly. I'm kind of like going right into the kind of grooves there. Um, goes onto your, your other piece because we're going to shabby up the background as well a wee bit. So um, around the edges. So don't don't worry about that. So I'm painting in the in the little initial S in there. Um, and then I'm wiping it, just dabbing it back. But I'm not too I'm not too bothered really about um you know whether it's a wee bit dribbly looking because you want it to look old so um you have to just kind of add a wee bit more and build it up so that it falls into all the relief and if it's not dark enough just pop a little bit more in until you've kind of like completed your shape and just put a little bit more in there because I want a wee bit more. See what I mean about the little dirty marks around there? You want them, so don't don't fret. It doesn't have to be completely clean. Just around the edges of that, and I'm just wiping it again, dabbing it again, so that it's all stuck in it. Now everything seems to be where I want it to be in my S, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a a soft clean brush and dip it in my water. And I'm just going to kind of water down some of that, you know, that's gone on the 
the background of the letter, just blending it into the background so that it doesn't look like I've been I've dabbed it with a cloth. You know, you just want to kind of get rid of it that way. So that's how I'm doing it. Just just doing that in the background. So you have your letter like that. I'll just put a little bit more colour in there. Make sure you've got all your edges. So you just repeat the same step for each one of your letters and I'll go and do that and I'll be back in one minute. We've done the oh I've just learned the pen on, on that. So we've done the the shabby letters and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some white. I mortared it down and we're going to start kind of like not not exactly like trying to get into the edges but then we're going to wipe it back again so um we're just kind of like wiping it back again so that we've still got the brown underneath it but the white is collecting in the groove of where the relief starts so in the edges i'm just doing this and then just taking it round all the edges of where your your letters are and then you're kind of wiping that back so that you're leaving the residue around the letters but you're not cover, cover, colouring the whole thing white but you are kind of like bringing the tone up of the whole piece by doing this so just going round the edges like that and then just wiping it back and then a wee bit round here where our smaller letter is and wiping that back and wiping that back and then maybe up round the corners because we're going to put in some dark around this in a minute so just kind of like so just where you think it should be i mean i just i'm just trying to make it look not a piece of mdf at the moment so i kind of like way of doing it is doing this so I'm going to kind of run over that and I'm going to kind of run over and give it a, almost a little sort of um, kind of highlight in the middle of my letters like that so that's the next stage and I'm just going to do the next one so just running your, let, your paint in making sure your brush is quite wet down the edges like this and just working in small sections and then wiping it back and then doing the same here and wiping it back and doing the same here just wiping it back each time so that the whole thing doesn't end up white you've still got your kind of bits of your brown in it and stuff and wiping it back and then kind of like the, the edges a wee bit of the edges and just brush them back and you don't need to take too much off of those round your small letter a wee bit of a highlight in the middle of each one you just don't want to end up looking like you just ran round it with a white a white um, brush. You know, you are trying to make it look different to what it was. And if you just do this and you just do a straight line like this and leave it, it looks like a straight line and you're leaving it. So um, just kind of water it down in all the edges, round your shape and then wipe back. Just so you don't see straight lines really. You're not wanting to see a lot of straight lines. Some white round the edges there and some white round the edges there so you just do that for the same for all of them and that's kind of like putting another like kind of bit of dimension into it because although we've made it it's slightly resin where it went through the stencil it's not thick so it's not like you've got a huge amount of kind of like a big thick relief to work with you don't you've just got that tiny little thin edge and this just gives it another bit of something to look at a wee bit of interest just keep wiping it back so that it's not yeah and then we we'll just put a wee bit of white a wee bit of highlight in the middle make sure you're one of your letters yeah just kind of kind of there's no point in really doing the last one off camera may as well just do it now because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some darker tones around the edges and then we're going to kind of string it so I'll put the water to water down that edge and that edge there and 
feel like you're this is what another one of those ones where you'll get the feel for what you what you like and um, you're just trying to make them look as um let me pee with some here's my pee my pee hasn't had the dark on it because it's had a kind of um hadn't dried right so i didn't want to kind of continue along with it so i'll just do that on camera now so you can see it that's the dark on it i'm rubbing it back like that getting rid of all that rubbing it back and i'm just going to go straight in with the white actually to be honest with you so the white the white the white round here the white round the edges my dog's going to start barking because i've heard something going along our track into our drive so um he's a wee bit of a, a watchdog he's only small he's not going to do much when he actually gets outside either he just like because he's so small he's so friendly that right so there we are that's the kind of so spring is so now what we're going to do next is i'm going to get the paint that was in here that i've darkened up and i'm going to make it even darker so I'm going to try and put a little bit of black in it and really darken that up. So this is the sort of shade we're going for now. It's really quite dark. I'm going to get rid of these brushes because I want a completely dry brush and I want a rough brush because I'm going to be dry brushing. So that when I say a smooth brush, sometimes I mean a smooth bristle brush. This is an acrylic brush. It's quite a dry, it's, sort of, it's a dry acrylic brush, but it's quite... Um, bushy and um, it's got plenty of bristles on it so um, then you're just kind of dry brushing a bit and then what you're going to do is you're going to actually just go around and kind of shabby it up again with another sort of dimension round where you put some of the white round the edges of this just to give it something else to look at because the more depth you can put into something and just by adding paint the better it ends up looking you can run over it as well over your piece as well with it your your so you've got high spots and dark spots and you can really kind of go to town on those edges you know like really kind of if you want really kind of like make them look big like much because at the end of all this i'm thinking i mean springs about pastel colors and little spots and all these kind of things i'm going to put some polka dots on this just to kind of so I've just been putting on some little polka dots um, just to kind of, I'll show you one I've done, um, just to kind of like, and then we're going to go round the whole letter and black uh, acrylic um, um, paint pen just to kind of give it that last bit of, to make the letters really sort of pop out. Um, I just thought I'd put spots on just because I was thinking, you know, this is quite a sort of vintage not much colours, not much pastels, nothing. Um, sort of like, kind of like, kind of too overtly Easter. So, um, with your, the little balls that we have, um, if you just also, um, the one we kind of washed off, if you just kind of give them a rough sort of coating of white, and then just kind of smear it in i mean you probably want to wear gloves just so that they have the same kind of feeling as the as the um the, the calf bun and it just kind of makes them all sort of more so here we have it it's all strung with its beads and i'll just run down each one of the letters so done is I've just highlighted each letter with a little bit of white black acrylic pen just to kind of make them pop but I think the only way you're really gonna see it um, in context is if I, if I hang it up and I take some nice pictures so I've been Lel made by Marley today I've been using the made by Marley craft blank um, bunt and flags um, and I what I did was I put paper clay relief using stencils and build up the texture so that you can see the texture in each one of the letters um, and then I um, gave it paint 
dark, finished it all off, highlighted it, and this is how it looks. And this is some of the, the fabulous sort of kind of relief where the paint sits down into the um, where you've pressed the clay into and put some pattern on it. So if you like this video, um, please feel free to share it if somebody else you think somebody else might want to make something like this. And if you want to see more craft videos and things that I'm making, then uh, please subscribe and um, and uh, be really, really grateful. Thank you very much. This has been the springtime wreath. No, no, it isn't a wreath. It's bunting. <laughs> Thank you.